Disney. Oh. <laughs> All right, so let's call the Board of Health meeting session at 7 p.m. Uh, first up would be public discussion, but I don't see anyone here. So um, does anyone have any uh, last minute items? Um, no, the one thing I, I have noticed though in the 24 hours, we should really have those 48. Because that's, that's the posting okay. um, position. We can't have a meeting within 48 hours, so okay. it should, it should be 48 rather than 24. Um, so the uh, Massachusetts Association of Health Boards have announced their uh, agenda for their certificate program. Um, so if anyone's interested, you can go to their website, it's posted there. Um, they have a number of uh, interesting uh, uh, talks. Um, one on, I think, in food inspection staffing, one on um, the new MA, so MAHB just released a new um, handbook. So they'll be going through that. Um, it might be something we'd be interested in getting um, that will help onboard any new members over time. Okay. And then um, they have a talk on TV surveillance, and then they're doing, they have a plenary session that's going to be on CBD, vaping, all of those sort of current issues. And um, I think that will be in part anyway hosted by Cheryl Sparra so I think they'll be looking at the legal side of all of that which could be very useful actually okay. um, so anyway in terms of open meeting law do we have to say if like two of us go or something <clears throat> I feel like I remember reading that somewhere but maybe I just made that up <laughs> um, so the open meeting law yeah two, anytime you have a quorum which would be two people you should really be posted if you're going to another meeting. If it's a training and there's no deliberation, I think that that's 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 the, the lever is deliberation, right? If you're going right. for a training yeah. right. meeting, Thank if you're sitting, you're sitting rows and rows apart, yeah, discussing right. anything. I mean, they do have like, like a lunch thing, but you can just conference. use different people. <laughs> so we <you> know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, the, okay. the, the deliberation is the, is the litmus test for it. Okay. But, I mean, if, if that's something you want to do, you could just post it, too. If you wanted to be there with, and with another freely. member and talk freely about what's going on and what's work and reading and not work and reading, you could always that post covers it. it. Yeah, yeah. Co posting it always covers. You're in a public. Okay. You're in a public setting. Yeah, oh. and, and you're posting. Okay. So if you if you they wanted do. to do it that way, yeah, and they they do um, <coughs> different events like a Cafe Nero and post it for so, different boards. Uh, different. So the only thing I would tell you though is if you do do that, make sure you take some notes, not detailed. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> like every <laughs> verbatim. Yeah, like, some sort of record. You have to create some notes. Uh, yeah. Exactly. We yeah. discussed this and this and yeah. this and this. Okay. So, okay. Simple stuff like that. Okay. okay. I am planning to go to the November second one. Okay. <laughs> second the sixteenth. Yeah, right? I haven't. Yeah. It's just checked which one. I'm you just go to one, right? Yeah. It's two. Okay. Yeah. There's they're two. Just there's just two different dates. Yeah. 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 It's the same thing. Yeah. I think this thing is a lot closer to here. <laughs> yeah. Driving one. 
except the Marlboro one. Uh, I can't remember what the two are. Oh, I don't know where they were. One is in a place called Taunt. Oh, yeah. I don't know where that, that, that is. South Shore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. And it's South probably Shore. not that one. Yeah. South Shore. I think Coast, I went right? to the Marlboro one last no, year. It's a little, no, it's Marlboro. 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 Yeah. Marlboro. That is way down. Yeah. Way south. Right? It's 24. Route 24. Yeah. It's Taunt, yeah. It's a Saturday. On the way to Rhode Island. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, uh, um, this is really more for the two of you, and, um, that I, and maybe you already know this, and it, again, it may not actually be applicable to us, but um, the Public Health Council announced that they're, um, have, they're doing these state Grant, well, grants for municipal health department shared services. I don't know that we have any need or interest in shared services, um, but, uh, and I think they that's somewhat need-based, um, but if it's something that would be useful, it's have it in your back pocket. <laughs> Uh, and lastly, get your flu shot. <laughs> Please. I know people who have already gotten the flu. <laughs> get your oh, flu really? shot. Yeah. Um, okay. I mean, it's still low, but um, but yeah. Uh, and then I forgot, I just in September said I was going to include a round table agenda item, but then I didn't do it. Uh, so for Laura, the round table agenda item was just going to be a a placeholder for people who wanted to present any, you know, interesting news stories that might be applicable to public health in Reading, or you know, meetings they've gone to or pre presentations they've seen, anything they want to discuss in that sense, and then, um, you know, if they want to pitch anything for a future agenda item, it would be a good time. So I don't know if anyone has anything. <laughs> anything. I don't have anything for it, but I don't know if anyone else has anything. Um, so now, go on to the presentation from Erica. Hi, Mara. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Um, those of you I haven't met, Erica McNamara, I'm with the Reading Coalition Against Substance Abuse at the Police Department for the Town of Reading, and I've been with um, the Coalition for 11 years now, so happy to be here to talk a little bit more about vaping. Since I last saw you, things have changed. Um, so I'm going to go through some of the basics of the Governor's Emergency Declaration. I know you probably have talked about it a little bit, but just to summarize it for folks um, in the public as well. As you know, the governor issued the declaration on September 25th, and it covers vaping <coughs> nicotine, THC products, which is the active ingredient in marijuana, CBD products, including accessories. Um, it's predicted to be a four-month ban, although the ban could be extended if the governor were to deem that, um, to give the CDC time to investigate the serious lung cases that they're seeing. Um, the nicotine products are to be enforced by the Board of Health, which you all know. The THC is to be enforced by the Cannabis Control Commission and CBD by the Mass Department of Agriculture. The big CBD products are part of the, the declaration. That's a question we've been getting asked. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what vaping products is because with everything in the news, some people are just asking for like, what are they? <laughs> and what are people doing? And, and what does the use look like in Reading? So I'm going to focus a little bit on the products and what the prevalence is amongst our young people in Reading and some of the, um, the health issues um, that have been coming up. So we know that um, nicotine is the primary product in most vaped products um, if it is a nicotine-based product. When the products first came on the market, they were advertised as nicotine-free and there were lots of people that were vaping and not realizing they even had nicotine in the products. They were sold as 0.0% um, nicotine. For a long time, people just believed they were flavor. Um, we know now, obviously, that after the products have been tested, that they have a, a serious amount of nicotine. Uh, Juul, one of the more popular products, um, has the equivalent of 20 cigarettes in one pod. Um, a young person could go through a pod a day, so that's a serious amount of nicotine that you're ingesting obviously creating a quicker path to addiction, to dependency. Um, young people who are waking up at night to use their jewel because they can't sleep through the night because of the need for the stimulant. So it's a pretty serious physical dependency, but then we also now know the damage to the lung tissue is also pretty severe. It's a very big industry, billion dollars and growing. Um, the ban in Massachusetts is just one piece of a much larger worldwide industry. 
Um, the major tobacco companies have bought up most of the smaller vape brand companies. Um, there's now 8,000 flavors, 466 different brands, including RJ Reynolds and Philip Morris. So it's very deep. It's like an octopus, many, many tentacles. Um, and there's more to come. Um, we know um, we know a lot about nicotine because of what we've learned about cigarettes over the, the past 50, 60 years. But sometimes we forget how nicotine affects the adolescent brain. We know that it does damage a developing adolescent brain. It can actually prime the brain to look for more stronger substances, um, which puts young people at higher risk of using weed, alcohol, and other substances. We know that youth who use e-cigarettes or uh, jewels or vapes are actually more likely to become regular cigarette smokers, increasing their risk overall for cancer. Um, we know that people who start smoking or using tobacco in adolescence um, smoke more, have a harder time quitting um, than people who start as adults. So obviously the longer that folks can delay their use, the more likely they are to have a better time quitting. The industry tactics that we've seen, very similar to what we saw with regular smoking, it was basically taking the old tobacco playbook and pulling it back out. Um, sweet, cheap, easy to get was basically the playbook. Um, some of the liquids and, and juices mostly contain um, kid flavored type of items. Anything from coconut to watermelon to um, mint to all kinds of um, fruit flavored type of items. Um, and again, the flavors were advertised to young people as containing very little nicotine or no nicotine. <coughs> and because the packaging wasn't regulated by the FDA, they were getting away with, with that. Um, we know that younger people are more likely to be influenced by the use of flavor products than adults. They're more attracted to the flavor than they are to the product. So the flavor actually drew them to the product, which is what has caused the epidemic of young, uh, youth using. So youth ages 12 to 17 who reported flavoring as a primary reason for using a product, 81% for e-cigarettes, 79% um, for hookahs, 74% for cigars. Cigars that are used by young people mostly are flavored cigars, peach, grape, raspberry, strawberry, that kind of thing. Um, when you look at the, young, the age of people who are using flavor products, over 65, 28% <coughs> compared to 63%, 25 to 29. Um, and as you look at young people, it, it gets up between 80 and 90%. So the flavor does make a difference. Um, the products are pretty inexpensive. Um, the Jewel Starter Kit goes for about 50 bucks. But um, for most people that have gone on the website, you get a pop-up for a coupon, and there's ways to get um, the cartridges much cheaper, and people also buy them in bulk and resell them. So in terms of what the vaping actually is, it's inhaling and exhaling an aerosol. It is not actually water vapor, it's a, it's a true aerosol. So just like if you were to spray Pam on a, a non-stick pan before you bake, um, there's gonna be sticky residue there. And when we inhale a, a vape, a vapor or liquid, it's gonna stick somewhere in our body, and that's what we're now learning is that that residue is actually damaging lung tissue. So some of the products range from e-cigarettes, vape pens, um, e-hookahs, e-pipes, tanks, mods, vapes, um, and there's all different types. I'm gonna show you some different pictures. Um, the most common brand names that we see are Jewel, Bose, Blues, Sorum, um, and others. Jewel really engineered a product that was much faster than the other products, and that really broke the industry open. So Jewel pods actually deliver 2.7 times faster the amount of nicotine than any other product on the market. So that's why we see the majority of young people using Juul. It works faster. So what's in it? The aerosol contains nicotine, which we know. Ultrafine particles um, that can be inhaled deep into the lungs. Flavoring, such as diacetyl, a chemical linked to a serious lung disease called popcorn lung. Um, volatile organic com compounds, cancer-causing chemicals, and heavy metals, such as nickel, nickel tin, tin, and lead. The other thing that we've actually heard is um, pesticides being in some of the products. And also for young people that have compromised immune systems or serious asthma, they, they may react more strongly to some of these um, ultrafine particles. So this is just some pics of the, some of the newer products. They look a little bit different than the skinny um, jewel vapes, um, just shorter, squatter, different styles, different colors. Um, so in terms of how it works, it heats up a liquid. Um, that usually contains nicotine. Sometimes it could be um, a weed product or a marijuana product. Um, and <coughs> the, there are newer products that are coming onto the market are, are actually designed to use either weed or um, nicotine, so you can buy one that does both. In terms of the engineering of the product, 
Again, one joule pod is equal to 20 cigarettes. It's about 200 puffs. It varies by the user in terms of how, how much they puff. Um, normally, if you were to smoke a cigarette very fast, you would probably cough, you would feel some kind of kickback, especially if the first couple times people smoke, they report getting lightheaded or having some physical reaction. Um, with the vaping, they don't have as much of a kickback. They, don't, they get a little bit of soreness in the throat, but not much. So the, the results aren't seen for a little bit of time, which kind of creates kids getting connected a little bit quicker to the physical <coughs> sensation. Um, we know that there's credible research that has shown that e-cigarettes do not help people quit smoking. The way that these particular products are designed, they have a much higher amount of nicotine than a smoking cessation device would have. So initially when the products came on the market 15, 20 years ago, they were designed in step down dosages, you know, five milligrams, four milligrams, three milligrams, two milligrams, one milligram, and the idea was you would use this and step down, just like you would with gum or another substance. These products are geared to get you to increase your use over time. So it's really not at all a smoking cessation device. We also know that for young people who begin vaping, they're also more likely to use other nicotine products, cigars, cigarettes, and hookahs within six months of their first use of a vape. Um, in terms of what they contain, the research shows that 99% of all the products in the United States that are known as e-cigarettes actually do contain nicotine. Only half of teens think that they're actually getting um, nicotine. The other half think it's just flavoring. Um, and 63% of Julie Uber's users think they're just vaping flavoring. And that comes back to the marketing about what is pushed um, around the product. We also know that the liquids can be poisonous if it's swallowed. So the, the vape cartridges can be hacked open and any of the liquids can be swallowed, which could be dangerous for poisonings. Um, there's open systems um, that are sold where you can just pour in liquids and then others um, that, that are sold as closed systems where you just click a cartridge in. Uh, marijuana um, can be vaped using modified e-cigarettes or specialized devices. Um, this one at the top is used for um, dry herb um, e-liquid and wax. So wax is um, another form of marijuana that's more of a distilled THC um, and it can be used for all three. And again, it's just the heating of the product and then uh, inhaling the, the vape. We know that e-cigarettes have not been safe for youth, um, for young adults, for pregnant women, um, or adults who don't currently use nicotine products. The governor's declaration now takes that further because we've seen the impact across um, the range of society. We also don't know a lot about secondhand vape damage. We don't know what that actually means or what it's doing. The ultra-fine particles are so fine that we also don't have a lot of research on the environmental impact because that residue is sitting somewhere. Um, in terms of other um, health risks, um, none of the products have been approved by the FDA to be inhaled. Um, there are people in the vaping industry who will tell you that they are FDA approved. They are absolutely 100% not FDA approved. There are specific ingredients in the products that can be ingested into your stomach, but they cannot be inhaled. And that's the real key difference. We do not have any research on the, uh, the inhalation of these products, and the FDA has not approved them for this particular purpose. Um, in terms of popcorn lung, that's what we've seen up until the last six months is if we heard of cases, it was mainly the, the popcorn lung cases. We also heard of kids, of kids having um, throat issues, kids with asthma having challenges and things like that. Um, but more recently, <coughs> we've heard more about um, the epidemic that you're currently hearing about. Um, and that's the, the chemical burn type of damage that we're seeing now, and that's what's causing death. So what we thought was a COPD-like symptom is now the extreme of a chemical burn, which is much, much more serious and can't be reversed. And, sorry. So you're saying that was our cost of data, so that's from Reading? No, that's this is the state. This, um, this is um, just general research, this piece. Oh, OK. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Um, yeah, this is just general research. Um, I'll let you know when we get to local data. That's a good question. Um, but in terms of local cases we've seen, we've definitely talked with young people and with families who've had health challenges because of vaping. Um, not to the point, some, uh, we've heard of cases of popcorn lung. We have not heard of the chemical burn cases, but they may not have reported them to us. Um, in terms of mandatory case reporting, that only started on September 11th. So again, we're going to start to see a lot of data coming in as the cases get worked through. 
Um, Maureen Busby, who's our Regional Tobacco Control Coordinator, just let me know that Commissioner Burrell, um, the head of DPH, said that they had 10 cases statewide in mass that met the CDC definition. Uh, five are confirmed, five pending, and over 100 cases still to be researched. And we still have no confirmation that the epidemic is cases by black market THC, which is a lot of what you're seeing the vaping industry talk, comment on, that it's not our product, it's this product. We don't know that yet. So this is local data. Um, so we ask young people at the middle school level, have you used a vaping product or you, do you currently use a vaping product? And 9% in 2019 of our middle schoolers, um, the sample size is 891 students from both middle schools combined, um, said that they had tried a vaping product. 4% said that they had used a product in the last 30 days. Um, <clears throat> and that rate is pretty comparable to the Middlesex League rate, which is um, 11 communities in our uh, regional area. At the high school level, much higher, 40% of our high school students reported trying a vaping product. Um, that was an increase of 4% since we last asked the kids in 2017. Um, that may not seem like a lot of 4% increase, but when you're um, looking at 1,000 kids, that's 40 kids, that's a lot of kids. 26% <laughs> um, reported vaping use in the last 30 days prior to the survey, and we saw an increase of 1% since 2017 in current use, so that's another 10 kids. Of those students that reported vaping or other nicotine use, 14% reported actually trying to quit using the products and reported being challenged by trying to quit. We do refer young people to quit resources and cessation, but I will say that this is a very challenging um, dependency because of the amount of nicotine kids are used to getting. So our local policies and procedures, just so you have a sense of what we've been doing, um, we started looking at this issue back in 2012. Um, we've been aware of vaping for 10 years. It was on college campuses for a while and started to filter its way down. Um, so we have a chemical health education policy for the Reading Public Schools, and that includes nicotine, all types of nicotine products. Um, at the middle school level, um, the consequences would be a discipline and referral to resources, which could include our school resource officer or our CASA. At the high school level, they refer to a chemical health education class that we teach with a high school health educator. And the class is a group education class, and a week after the class they meet individually with either an CASA person or the health educator. And then if they need further services, they're referred out. If it's a second violation <coughs> related to vaping, they're actually referred to their primary care physician. We implemented that four years ago when we were hearing actual physical cases and kids having physical issues. We did not feel like a referral to a licensed alcohol and drug counselor was enough. So we actually made that call on our own to implement the primary care referral. And we had primary care physicians calling us saying, why are you sending them to us? And we said, please just look at them. <laughs> please do an assessment and tell us they're okay because we can't make that call. Um, and we've since now got a lot of people who understand now why we were sending them. We were just hearing these weird anecdotal stories of, of kids really struggling with health issues. Um, now that we've got the ban in place, we'll refer all kids that are caught to primary care right away, and we'll be recommending any kids who come forward and need to quit to see their doctor right away so that if there isn't any issue, the cases can get reported and they can get the treatment they need. So in terms of what local youth are using, um, last year, in terms of confiscated devices, um, our high school disciplinary staff is doing a lot of work to try to make sure the devices are not around other young people. Um, but this is just a sample of some of the devices that were pulled off of students, 26 joules, um, five other types of devices, um, seven joule cartridges. This is what it looks like. So that's the amount of stuff that just comes out. And an average kid, who gets caught could have two or three of these products, or one or two of the products. So they might have a jewel, and they might have a liquid and a mod. So they're using multiple products, not just one type of product, which also increases the complexity of determining what the cause is, because it may not just be what's in the jewel or what's in the liquid, because they use different liquids at different times. And if we investigate the liquids further, they're hacked. So one of these is a liquid that was split open in different things were put in it. The labeling is different than what's actually inside the stuff. So it's it's a little tricky to kind of get at what's actually going on. Um, in terms of what parents can do, talk with your kids. Um, let them know what actually this product is and why it is dangerous. Um, there is a great website, getoutreach.org, that the state runs. And there's also great uh, quick resources. 
if you know people who are adults who are tobacco users or vaping users, the state has issued a standing order for nicotine replacement devices for free if people are 18 and over. If they're 18 and under, the, the devices are available, but they're not free. So, so our resources on our website, we have all kinds of resources on vaping prevention. Um, and the Quit Support, the Truth Initiative has a great um, a texting um, app that's wonderful for kids, teens. Um, and then we have our William James College Interface Referral Service. What we find people need, not just the nicotine replacement support, but also counseling. And this is a service that the town provides where people can get connected to outpatient mental health providers. So that's it for me. I'm happy to answer any questions. No questions. Uh, do you have a sense for what, first of all, is there anything that the board can do to assist in your efforts? I think just continually talking about it and any new information that comes okay. out, sharing that at your public meetings is helpful. Okay. Um, and also if there's any declarations, actually reading the declaration at a meeting I think would be helpful because okay. people are hearing the edited news yeah. um, and they don't actually know what's in the declaration. Um, so if, even if it's just kind of a brief summary, just so that you have, you're saying officially what's happening, I think is helpful okay. to have um, clear cut news from you. <laughs> Um, is helpful. Yeah, yeah. But I think also just being, you know, we're going to be looking at how else we can help support young people in terms of quitting. It's not easy right now. The resources are not fully there. We don't have enough research to know actually what cessation products in what quantity and what dose actually works because if you're a nurse practitioner, you're working with a young person and they say that they vape um, a couple times a day. They don't tell you actually how much nicotine they're using. You might prescribe one thing and then find out. Yeah. <laughs> so the adults and the young people have to communicate. That's a tricky thing. Everyone's learning right now. The state's trying to help people. We'll get more guidance. Um, I think they're all working really hard to figure it out, but we have to ask questions a little bit differently um, and really get at what are young people actually putting in their bodies so we can help them figure it out. I thought I remembered a letter that you were thinking would be helpful for us. To yes, well, um, prior to the declaration that the governor um, issued, okay. the only other thing that was happening at the state level that was promising is the attorney general has a pending lawsuit against Jewel. Um, and I looked into trying to draft something, but I couldn't find anything public about um, where the status is. Um, the Attorney General has reported on it a couple times, but they're still under investigation. So there wasn't anything concrete yet. Um, but if there is something, I would I would share that with Laura if that's okay and ask for your support. Um, we actually filed um, a, a case locally. Our school resource officer knew of Juul delivering devices to Austin Prep um, and without um, ID verification. And so we filed that as one of the cases with the Attorney General. Because they're supposed to check for ID. And Austin Prep ordered it just to see because they wanted to understand students were saying it was that easy. And it was. <laughs> so. so we will let you know, but thank you for uh, bringing that up. Yeah. And I don't think that we have any sort of link on our Board of Health website referring people to our CASA. Oh, that would be great. Is that something that we should think yeah, about? Yeah, I, mean, I think that would be a good thing. Yeah. It's a great we can just even have it in the that side, side bar, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And we have a new outreach coordinator with our CASA. Her name's Sammy Salkin. So she also is available for if folks are looking for resources on trying to access cessation or um, other support services. Laura knows her and can refer people if you get calls um, to the staff. Okay. Right. That's a great presentation. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you very really much. Helpful. Thank yeah, you. It is really thank helpful. You. Alarming. Yeah, yes, it is. It is. It is. It, I mean, it's very alarming, but it's also at least the CDC now has stepped in, and we've been waiting for that for for seven years. So I'm very yeah. thankful for that. Um, it's unfortunate it's had to get to this point, but that's the power of an industry with this yeah. amount of money, and that's it's hard to be public health on the other side of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there any sign of the FDA moving in yet? Well, they've been mm -hmm. saying for um, about three years they were going to do this, and there's been cease and desist letters yeah. to individual companies, but um, yeah, it's probably going to take 
a much larger larger set of um, situations kind of what happened with the tobacco settlement you know and that's part of what has challenged the whole vaping industry is they are part of that loophole that isn't included in the tobacco settlement so they got away with all the marketing and and all that good stuff yeah that really astounds me how long did they market it as zero percent nicotine before they for a long time there's still products you can buy now yeah that say that say zero point zero yeah and they are, sometimes will say for novelty use, not not edible things that protect them. I guess because it's not a it's not to be used for that, but everyone knows what it's used yeah. for. <laughs> so. so are there? Um, I don't know. I'm thinking, I guess I had a couple questions. One yeah. was: Is any of the excellent research that you know about going on for testing interventions? Is it being done for youth in particular, or is it? We don't here? know. We don't adults? know. Um, we don't know. And then is there any... I do know of cases that have been, we've referred to Boston hospitals and, and that they're being followed and they're being cared for, but I don't know of any cases of the chemical burn damage. Okay. Um, and then I'm just thinking of other educational material. I mean, I saw something from the Mass Department of Health, I think, yeah. that was an education campaign about the Yes, the Get school. Outreach campaign. Okay. Uh, and that is all in our schools. Okay, um, great. Yeah, so that was the one you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, and that's incorporated <laughs> into our health education program. And I'm actually meeting with the whole wellness team tomorrow, our, our um, K-12 folks, to, to go over the new data and what's happening. Um, but I try to keep them updated, show them what's happening. and they incorporate that um, and young people are also getting more involved um, we've been part of the 84 movement for many years which is um, a group of um, young people across the state 84 percent of young people in Massachusetts do not smoke and um, the movement was created so youth could have a voice and they've been very successful in in pushing forward some policy initiatives and also education um, they did not have funding to address vaping up until the last year or so but we'll now be able to start using um, some of the 84 resources to do more youth leadership work which we're excited about because there's a lot of young people who are at, outraged yeah. that they're being guinea pigs uh, for these companies and they have a lot to say about it so so that maybe next time they'll come present for you Great. <laughs> <laughs> they say it much better than I can you look like you're gonna say something I just have one more yeah go for it are we um is Reading doing evaluations of the campaign efficacy? So for the education campaign, we don't have the resources to do evaluation. I do track what I disseminate and I track um, how it's being used, um, but we don't have the, the resources of an independent evaluation, and the the state has not um, given us anything for that. If we if we do an eighty four project, that's built in. There's an evaluation component, and we've done four eighty four projects in Reading. Uh -huh. uh, one of those was actually you guys were involved in banning tobacco sales in pharmacies and we were able to evaluate the work that we did around that because we had a little bit of extra mini grant funding um, so when there's evaluation funding we, we jump on it <laughs> but I don't know if the state is doing a separate evaluation I know that um, what we order and what we disseminate and how we use it I track um, That's awesome yeah okay. I don't know maybe we could talk offline sure well, I mean I could do evaluation so oh okay for free <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, our help write grants or something. Oh, awesome. So, anyway, I'll email you. Though. Okay. Okay. That's wonderful. Thanks. Thank you. And those surveys that the state does, uh, are those annual of the students? The YRBS. The YRBS. Yeah. So it, our yeah. survey we just did 2019, it's usually done every two every years. Two years okay. And the state um, data hasn't been released yet. Um, they're usually oh, about okay. a year behind us okay. because it's a weighted sample. So they take all the different surveys and then they compile their sample. Okay. Um, the CDC data for 2019 isn't up yet either, although it's been collected. Okay. So it takes them a year to two years to actually put up their data. <laughs> We're lucky we get ours a little bit earlier. Okay. But then we don't have the comparison, so it's a little bit hard because yeah. the comparison's two years old. But, but this year was the first time Reading participated in the Middlesex League survey, so we had regional oh, comparison, okay. which was nice. Yeah. Um, so. so we have lots of other data if you're interested in any other health data. Um, from sexuality to substance use to physical activity to sleep, we've got it all. So there's 120 data points on the high school survey and 80 on the middle school. Oh, wow. So if you'd like a presentation on that, that's available too. <laughs> Not all of that. <laughs> Highlights. <laughs> Highlights. Um, but sometimes it's helpful for, for health departments. <clears throat> okay. Anything else? No? Thank you very Thank much for your support. You. Thanks for coming out. All right.
right, so next up, Healthy Food Report. Right. So there were 20 inspections in the month of September, um, no re-inspections. We had four complaints. Out of those four complaints, they were all inspected. Three were corrected. One is still pending. An order letter was sent. Um, it was returned. We're trying to track down the owner. It's just an overgrown vegetation. Okay. Um, I thought that was tracked down. If they own the property. We're not positive oh. if they own the property. Um, we had zero animal inspections, one septic abandonment, and then in September we didn't do any flu shots, but we've already done three. Flu. Thank you. Thanks, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. We've already done three flu clinics: the Senior Center, Frank Tanner, and the Police Department, and we have seven coming up, and possibly an eighth one at DPW. At um, it's DPW. We're just waiting for a call back on when we can get in there. In Maven, in September, we had two cases of salmonella, which is undercooked chicken, and one case of ricinosis, which is undercooked meat or unpasteurized milk. Either or? It, yeah, it could be either. <laughs> okay. And no tobacco violations. The any vaping violations that we find, they would be covered under that tobacco department. We, I, oh, I right. physically went to each location and made sure that they pulled them. Awesome. And you dropped off all that. Yeah. That's great. So I handed them the letter and I made sure that they were moved. Thank you. And then we had someone follow up, a different inspector follow up on the weekend to make sure that they didn't <laughs> <laughs> the weekend. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. All right. Now on to the pesticide regulations. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh. So did everyone get the comments? Yes. Yeah. I did wonder whether or not there was some draft that Andy commented on because some of his questions seemed like maybe they referred to something else I but that was my main question there was although I think the, I, I feel like the draft he commented on was one that we had also changed uh, so there's a lot of I have it there's a lot of red but but it doesn't all actually what's in yeah, there were a couple questions I had that were not clear. So are we in the phase yeah. where we're trying, we're trying to, to incorporate everyone's edits from the select board meeting yeah. a couple of meetings ago and then clarify, new draft? yeah, push it back okay. to the select board and then it goes to town council, right? And then okay. maybe <laughs> back around again. <laughs> um, yeah. So, okay. Uh, so let's just start at the top. <laughs> uh, How are you going to do this? Are you going to, is somebody going to? Uh, somebody. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> right, right, we're going right, to do it. Right. Uh, someone want to be a person? I, I can take notes and I'm, I have a, a draft. A draft. Well, for, or, for my way, just yeah. to make it really simple, using the version that's in the packet sure. okay. as baseline yep. okay. for whatever, however it needs to be changed. Okay. Okay. If something got missed or this if there's something from another version or whatever, if we could right. use this template. Yep. And work off of that, then I think that would be the least oh, okay, confusing yeah. for staff to go yep, back. That's fine. So many versions mm -hmm. going around, it gets confusing. Mm -hmm. Which is why we provided a clean copy. Yeah. Um, so you're thinking we start with the questions and just work our way down? Yeah, and I then, think okay, so. And then we'll go back. There are some that I think aren't necessarily, I mean, some of Andy's I don't think are necessarily obvious what he's <laughs> addressing, but we'll see. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. There are a couple comments about school property. Um, <laughs> DPW. So DPW manages school property. Are the side, but the sidewalks and the so they manage the sidewalks and the tree lines in front of. So we don't have very many tree lines, but in front of in front of school property. That's what you had said, Laura. I don't. I, I'm not. Oh, involved you don't in know. That's what okay. I'm all, but is that what you had commented on? Yeah. yeah. So. It was my recollection that they're all they don't already don't use the products yeah. that we're talking about. I think so. I, I mean, I again, I'm not an attorney, and I spent some time trying to read these regulations yeah. today. But yeah. it looks to me like um, under Massachusetts General Laws 132B uh, 6G. They are not allowed to use anything right. known, likely or probably human carcinogen, um, or, or anything on, on the list or on in their toxicological okay, concern. But it's fine. <laughs> um, so it seems like they already don't use those, and that's already covered. Yeah, so, although I don't know if that's considered school property. Oh, the tree lawn in front of the school. That's right. what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, that's the question. Okay. Um, but either way, I. So whether we want to exempt them or not, I mean, it, I think it's probably unlikely that the DPW is using different <coughs> products on the tree line and sidewalk than they would use anywhere else on school property, right? Right, but I guess if we were thinking in terms of everything that we want this to cover, if it's true that the tree lawn in front of the school is public property and not, but then is it, if it's a public school, is that not? I, I'm sorry, we probably already had this discussion. For a public um, school, yeah, is the land? I, not I think it's all. I think it's all in one, isn't it? So who cuts the tree lawn in front of the school? I think that's it's in the facilities, school. right? Oh, it's DP, uh, I assume not facilities. Excuse me, uh, DPW. Yeah, that's what I was assuming. From. Yeah. But I think regardless of what, what the <coughs> regulation says it's going to be on all um, public land, right? Right. So that includes the schools, which currently do not use well, those for, uh, pesticides anyway. Sort of all public land except in our, we define, I don't know, where am I? So, are they asking if the school is exempt? Is that the question? I think they're asking if, uh, so we stay in here, or the original drafters mm -hmm. <laughs> stated that the school would be, school property would be exempt. I don't really know why necessarily. I think it was to probably prevent having to go to both the school both school committee and the Board of Health for things. There, there was um, one of the select board members had commented and seemed to know a lot about this when we presented it to them and I recall him saying like we don't have purview over the school yeah. grounds and kind of so the whole campus. Um, yeah, but I don't know if we have that documented. <coughs> oh, you know, his, <laughs> his comment. Um, we might have to look into that. So, who could we ask? Basically, find I mean, out whether or the not. The thing is, if it's if we don't consider the sidewalk and the tree lawn as school property, but surely there's someone who works for the town who knows who owns that land, right? Yes. So we just need to ask that person, right? Is that yeah? If it's technically school property, or right? Is it tech property or is it town land? And if it's town land, yeah, then we don't even need to say anything about school property, right? Property, right. Which I think is the point. Yeah. So, 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 so,
research. Right. Figure out. Yeah. Who we can talk to so, about that. Right. Figure out who. I guess knowing who owns that land helps us in terms of educating the school about it because right, the regulation the would cover that land if the, it did. Isn't the setback always the school at the town property? That's what yeah. I was Typically, thinking. Yes, I is. was thinking it was most likely town property. But when it's town owned land on town owned land, where does it stop from an authority standpoint? Right? So it's, the school is all town owned land. But and the school's, but the school's right. Oh, so I don't know if that's true. If, if it's technically... Oh, this, this, the, uh, the sidewalks? Oh, you're talking about the sidewalks? I thought yeah. the actual school... No, 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 no. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, no, no, but the grounds it sits on, I assume we own our schools. That's I the assume sidewalk. we do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going on that assumption. The sidewalks and the school property are both owned right, by where the schools. At so my house, by the DPW, right? at my house, the town owns yeah. X amount of feet up onto what I potentially take care of, right? It's that's town of land. Thank you, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Bills in the mail. Um, so the question, I guess, would be with schools and being a town-owned land and the street being town-owned land, they're both, they're, there's certainly a setback, but the question is who governs over what part of it? Does the school govern over the entire sidewalks and it's abutting their property and it's all town owned? I, yeah, but DPW governs over the school and DPW governs over the sidewalk. Yeah, I think the only question here is whether this DPW. is something where we have to go where we, Do we need to include the school committee with this or not? The school committee. That's, That's the, question. the only question. Yeah. Is it technically going to be, is it, we're looking for technicalities here. So would this be something that we could ask town council to advise us on? Yeah. They yeah. Can review. Yeah. So that we don't miss anything. That's part of the review. Right. Yeah. I mean, it seems to in the actual, in, you know. So can we put implementation? This? It's probably not going to be a huge right. deal because DPW doesn't use these things right. anyway. Right. But right. it's just a nuanced thing. Of, yeah. Right. If you're right in the regulation, it will yeah. be. Uh, cover all possible bases. Okay. So it's like a side note yeah. on that um, section. So that's some town council can just yeah make sure if there's any more work that needs to be done on that. Okay. And then what they want from us is to know whether or not we intended to include school property. Yeah. And we're going to say that we're going to ask for town council to advise us on. Whether the, that even needs to be yes, in there or not. But it's really uh, kind of more or less a legal question. It, it, yeah. Is this in keeping with other communities? I think the answer is yes, because this entire document is. It's straight from <laughs> Marblehead, right? <laughs> That's a, that'd be a yes. Um, oh, but 8B. What is 8B? That's, yeah, that's the dollar That's the actual So those fine. are yeah. lower. Town Council had recommended that ours are lower than Marblehead's by a significant portion of amount, but it was what was recommended, I think, by Town Council. That we lower it to be more in line with board of our health other fines. fines. Our other fines, okay. So, um, on that, <laughs> should we change it right now? We've got 50 for the first, 100 for the second, and, and all subsequent offenses. Correct. But in the bylaws and other, the board of health fine structure is 50, 100, and then 150 for additional. So, should we just Keep it, keep it the same as the bylaws. So it's 50 yeah. for first, 100 for second, mm -hmm. and then 150 for subsequent offenses. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Instead of having it go up, as you suggest, yep. just to be consistent. Yeah. Okay. So the response to this, the question on 8B is that it's tailored to red. Yep. Yeah, 
left over. Yep. Consistent threadings. Yep. Yep. Uh, which is also, I think, a response to the next one. Um, right. Which I mean, we're not. Yeah. Up, um, it's not significant enough to go up to that level. So again, it's the same as above. Yeah. Uh, okay. No. As town council reviewed this, I mean, I think he heard the presentation, the original presentation to the select board, and that's yeah. when he requested the change in the fine structure. But I don't know that he's read it thoroughly. The the goal was to have all the comments and then give it yeah. to town council. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it looks like that's a no and a yes, right? On both of the two questions. It, it was an earlier review, and then yeah. the, the, at this point, they want to provide full comments. Right. Um, in the language of intent. Okay. Right. This was the question about whether we're being too broad in our intent section. Or not broad enough in what we say we were trying to do. Right. Um, and there are a couple of comments to this. Um, I mean, I don't object to it being applied in more places. As she said, I'm not sure what lies outside the scope of the tree lawns. Are we talking about like that the would be triangle park right park here, or all of park? Yeah. Um, should we talk about that, or would that be a change that would be so significant that would require? Because like right now scope. in our yeah. our definition is that it's sidewalks and tree lines. Yeah. So <coughs> I don't think that's necessarily bad, but it's yeah. such an increased scope that I think we'd have to like start back at the beginning. So it's like, do we push this forward, having it be a narrow scope and get that passed and pushed through, and then at another point see how it's that's narrow. going and, and expand the scope, yeah. or do we like? Start from scratch so, and like so the town doesn't make it light. <clears throat> doesn't currently use pesticides neither do the schools on any of their uh, grass that they own so the, I guess the question is is that a state right do we not even have to bother with it is it already done because they don't they don't they don't do it currently I don't know if that's best practices if that's coming from the state why they don't you mean just on school property or on all? No, like all the fields, the parks, um, and, and everything like that. We don't use pesticides unless um, uh, rare occasion that you have to for right. whatever, whatever reason. Um, but we, we don't use them on, on the school property or on, on the parks currently right now. So my question would be is do we need to address it? Has it already been addressed in front of the state or are they just going by best practices and saying, well, what am I going to Spend pesticides. Spend money on pesticides. I think that's on our what it is. Property. I don't think it's. I don't the know state. which one it is. Yeah, I don't okay. think the state mandates any of that. So. Just want to clarify that because we may not have to do anything with it um, if, the, if the state is telling them. Yeah, I don't think the state is telling them not to. I think they're okay. choosing not to. I was not uh, sure. Yep. I haven't seen any. The only state. Restrictions, I think, are to agriculture, and then obviously you can't use anything that's not. I mean, you have to be a licensed advocator, right? Those things. And the school, and the school, yeah, and the school child care center stuff yeah. like that. So it's a good question uh, that was asked, though. Um, I mean, whether we want to make it sound less. So in the intent section, the you last either add that in or make it less broad, right? Mm -hmm. If we want to make it less broad in that, uh, 
number one to protect the public health by restricting the use of a lot on town owned land. You want to say certain town owned land. You want to just leave it as it is. Well, there's the uh, to encourage the reduction and elimination of the use of tax of pesticides on private property. There's so, that, right? yeah, although I think Andy had a fix oh, he did. for okay. that. I that. Well, what I think is a fix for it, which is, ah, oh, where is it? <laughs> Hold on. Okay, another copy here. Um, in section 8A. It says, so we have here, that's under violations and penalties. It shall be unlawful for any person to use or apply any toxic chemical pesticides on any town on land except as specifically authorized in these regulations. And he proposed adding the sentence. This includes application of pesticides on town-owned land that occur during application of pesticides to private property. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so that might have a different okay. draft. So we can leave that uh, yeah. in section one then. If I we, think if so. If we add, add okay. that, I think. Okay. Can you read that again? Yes. Me, please? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And is it possible to share that? Or? Yeah. Okay. Uh, or, or you don't have to do it right now. Just yeah. It's yeah. Okay. Um, I think or. you. I think I forwarded you that copy from. You sent it to Bob and myself. Right. We'll put them all in. One bullet yes. point of paper. Yeah. This is a bit, some of the, the specific sentence is, I think, not included in the bullet point. Should be. So he didn't uh, edit a draft. He just he sent some comments that. Edited a draft, but his edited draft, I think, also merges with our edited. So we okay. put them all in bullet points. Okay. Yeah. So they're all, all Andy's comments are right here. But it, not that sentence. Yeah, this one sentence didn't make it. But, um, okay, so this is what it says. <laughs> uh, so we have here, it shall be unlawful for any person to use or apply mm -hmm. any toxic chemical pesticides on any town owned land except as specifically authorized in these regulations. The added sentence is, this includes application of pesticides on town owned land that occur during application of pesticides to private property. Meaning that you would just have to, if you're applying pesticides to your own land, you have to be mindful that you are not allowed mm -hmm. to have, to also apply. Right, yeah, the, the town owned. On the town owned strip. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And do we just assume that it's known, that even though you're not applying it yourself, because people can't apply this themselves, a licensed applicator has right. to do it. We just assume that that's understood. Is that true? I think true? so. Because it's, it doesn't <coughs> specify who's, it just says application of pesticides. to uh, focus in the intent last paragraph of section one mm -hmm. where uh, we say to protect the public health by restricting the use of hazardous chemicals and pesticides on town and land. Mm -hmm. Do we want to leave that as that broad or do we want to? Well, I think um, I'm kind of just thinking out loud here. If our goal is to encourage reduction, elimination, and use of toxic, toxic pesticides on private property, which from my point of view I think it is, then the protecting public health by restricting use of hazardous da -da -da on, on town owned land, I think, is fine. Yeah, I, um, I'm sort of. Then just not talking about ponds and waterways. In a yeah. sense in uh, essence yeah. <laughs> um, limiting the scope yep and then just having this be about okay so up in the paragraph above, 
Oops, sorry. So in the paragraph above, get rid of the ponds and waterways. Is that what you're so. thinking? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we don't talk about ponds or waterways at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, I guess, it's runoff, I really guess, is what you're, what the concern would be, right? That's true. Right. I think it's, I mean, I think it's fine to leave it broad if in our definitions we're clear what town-owned land refers to, which it does say here in definitions, section three, the town-owned land that these regulations pertain to are the sidewalks and tree lines. Right. But, I mean, I understand their point that we are saying different things at different points in the document. So the prohibition section, section four, says it's prohibited on all town-owned lands. Oh, and yeah. And we're not. Yeah, yeah we're not. Doing that. I think his comment specifically in bullet five is talking about whether we want to encourage the reduction of toxic pesticides on private property. Do we well, want that to be a, a goal? And I think we do. Oh, yeah. So on the definitions, and this, this, this just reads weird, um, messy, it, it's clarified because right. it says the definition of town owned land is um, right. sidewalks yeah. and tree lines. Yeah. So any right. reference to town owned land in this document it's supposed is to be, supposed to be a reference to sidewalks and tree lines. It is, yeah. Under the definitions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of how I know that I know a lot of time they do it that way. I'm not a big fan. It's kind of messy when you when you craft something that way. But that's technically when you look back at it, that's what every piece of town and land you see in this document is referring to. Yeah. So you don't really have to do anything with it. Yeah. Um. So your point is. We, sorry, um, it seems like his comment is alluding to do we want to say that we're trying to influence the use of toxic pesticides on private property? I think theoretically we do as like a downstream effect if we're gonna, you know, um, prohibit the use on town property perhaps private property owners also will stop using it. But I don't think we can say that in our intent. Right. I don't think we can like guarantee that we will influence. I don't know. I'm just trying to like I mean, answer his like theoretical question. Right. Here. What is yeah. the goal? I thought that was Ian's. Oh, Ann's. Yeah. Oh it yeah. is, sorry. No. <laughs> I don't know. Try to yeah. 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 I mean, I guess the words encourage right. is a soft enough verb. That, um, and so is your question, do we have jurisdiction or something yeah. to, to try to encourage? I mean, we definitely try to encourage a lot mm -hmm. of behavioral changes mm -hmm. in public health in general, like vaping. You know, I mean, people have their own choice about what they do, but we want to make it... I'm, I'm fine with keeping it in. I, I just want to make yeah, sure we're I'm, like addressing the question. Yeah, yeah, no, I think it's fine. I think it's fine to keep it in. Okay. So, did we decide we were going to take out ponds and waterways? Oh, right. Well, I think the, yeah, I was thinking that, I'm wondering if the concern is water runoff, is water runoff, but I, mm. you know, we're. But it's, no, it says the use of them on ponds and waterways. Yeah. I think we can probably get rid of it because we're not even talking about ponds or waterways at or all in town on right. land. So I think we can get and rid of it. And then the definition was saying town on land is one thing. So right. It's very specific. So I think we can remove get rid of that. Remove the ponds and waterways. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I wonder if a question too is just to get us to think about how broad we think this should be. Um, but, I mean, we've already had that discussion mm -hmm. tonight of maybe we do want it to be more broad, but that can be for a separate regulation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I think the definitions are clear. Okay, so our response is we'll leave it as is. Yeah. Because we 
defined town of property. Correct. Even yeah. though we're speaking about it in this broad sense. Correct. So we're yeah. leaving Ponds and Waterway? No, we're no, moving that. We're, moving. Okay. we're just saying we don't have okay. to really address um, anything else when it says town only. I don't have to change that to mean anything specific because the definitions is already right. defined what it is right. for this document. Disruptors. Is that yes. the first handy one? Mm -hmm. That are probable. Yeah. Right. But no, we no. have. Don't we, don't, we, don't we say that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The only thing I couldn't figure yeah. out yeah. 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 about endocrine disruptors are those necessarily categorized as toxicity one or two? No. So toxicity one or two is acute. Toxicity, so oral, dermal, inhalation, uh, and I think eyes. Uh, and so then, so there's that, and then there's all the chronic toxicity things, which are the endocrine disruptors, the, I think we have those. It's really not in here. <laughs> Yeah. And the human carcinogens. Yes. yes. So his question. I think he was just wanting to make sure. I think this is just saying my comments are assuming that this is right. what you're doing and this is it this is what we're doing. Yep. <laughs> That's the case. Oh. So I think we don't he's just asking, is this a Am I reading this right? And we are saying yes. You are reading this right. Oh, <laughs> I didn't see anything about endocrine disruptors. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, oh, I see it. I see it. Okay. Got it. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, Section three. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this section consists of a section. list of individual connected findings by the board. And I don't know. What? Uh, so I'm wondering. Okay, so I'm wondering if that was referencing. Oh, I don't know if this is what he's referencing. Hold on, let me just see based on. Oh no! So that must be. Oh, so he had here to strike out. Oh, okay. Section one, in, back to section one, <laughs> one in ten. To yeah, narrow it by eliminate. Okay, so in the second to last paragraph of section one in ten, it is in the best interest of public health to eliminate the use of toxic pesticides on town owned. And he said basically strike out everything beyond that and just say sidewalks and tree lawns. So narrow the scope of in the intent, mm -hmm. which would work, I mm -hmm. think. Uh, wait, no, because that. we don't want to. We don't want to do that because we're only referring to town and land everywhere else, and it's already defined. Yeah. So you don't want to define it right here and then leave it as town and land somewhere else because we're going to wait a minute. I'll tell them. I, I, I say you leave just, just town land. I, yeah, you I find it. I say you leave it because it okay. makes it consistent. Yep, I'm good with that. that was but I think what I was saying was, do you want to break these up into two paragraphs? I think that's what he said. Yeah. Uh, oh. You mean one and two? Um, in, in section section one, the yep. uh, fourth paragraph to, yep. to break that into two to make it a fourth and fifth paragraph. Oh yeah, I think that's what he's referring to also on, on here. We're just consider breaking these up for emphasis. Yeah, clarity. yeah, actually, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so right he has all pesticides that all pesticides are toxic to some degree. Sentence. Uh, wait, what is it? Oh, I got it. 
All pesticides are toxic to some degree and commonplace widespread use of pesticides is both a major environmental problem and a public health issue. And then he says, put in a semicolon, and then all citizens, in particular children, blah, 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 that whole sentence that ends in in particular, they got a semicolon instead of a period at the end. And then he says, yeah, break up the next paragraph. So you have a balanced and healthy ecosystem is vital to the health of the town its, and its citizens, and as such, is also in need of protection from exposure to hazardous chemicals and pesticides. Semicolon, and then a break, new paragraph, I guess. Uh, when an activity raises threats of harm to the environment or human health, precautionary measures should be taken even if some cause and effect relationships are not yet fully established. Semicolon and, and then a new paragraph is what he says. about the encouraging the reduction. Is this still a goal? We say yes. We'll just going to leave that in. Yeah. Consider changing the format of each defined word or phrase to more closely match that in other reading for Board of Health regulations. So that is just, I made notes on that. So that is just, right. So the way we have it written, at least in the Tobacco regulations is instead of this being um, so under definitions, mm -hmm. the second paragraph, the town owned land that these regulations pertain to, and sidewalks and tree lines. Instead, you have town owned land, colon, uh, sidewalks and tree lines. <laughs> um, and then pests, colon, undesirable plants, insects, fungi, <laughs> you know, all of that. And then he had a whole lot of stuff about pesticides um, that he wanted to change in the way that's set up. Um, and so, hold on a second. <laughs> um, and I don't totally agree with, so he had, oh, okay, so he had pesticides as used in these regulations are, and then he cut out, defined by the Massachusetts Department of Food Agriculture and Agriculture Pesticide Bureau, that whole sentence. He cut out pesticides are poisonous substances, that whole sentence, um, as well as the list of types of pesticides. And so instead, his full thing says, pesticides as used in these regulations are those pesticides that are classified as known, likely, or probable human carcinogens, et cetera. Um, and crossed out are subject to these regulations. I would say we're going to keep in the format where we have the word, the colon, and the definition. Mm -hmm. My suggestion would be to do pesticides and then do colon substances or mixtures of substances that prevent, destroy, repel, or mitigate pests or defoliate, desiccate, or regulate plants. Uh, and maybe colon, and that are classified as known, likely, or probable human carcinogens, or probable endocrine disruptors, or those pesticides that meet the criteria, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And does mm -hmm. that? Yep. I like that. Okay. Um, can we still say the 
that definitions that we use came from the Mass Department of Food and Agriculture Press Design Bureau. Like just citing the source basically of our definition. Well, his next, or do you want to have his next comment says refer to the government and that that determines the classification. So Oh, okay. I thought right. okay. I was reading that as for all of these, but okay. Right, which we already do. Right. I know. So maybe Yeah, that one was sort of unclear to me. But yeah, okay. I think I wasn't reading that as specifically as classification. I was thinking that for each of these definitions we needed to have, you know, um, who gave you that definition and okay. refer to that government entity. But maybe he didn't mean it that I don't way. I think we have that in the tobacco regulations, so Yeah. Um so I'm fine either way. Either having the source of this definition or not having the source. I prefer to have it in there. That's my only. <laughs> but I think I mean you're still cutting out these cutting two out. sentences, and you yes. Can. So it's two points after pesticides. So there are two parts to the pesticide definition. Yeah. Although I did want to keep it linked. Yeah. With it and. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Which I think is good. Um, should we, where should we insert the, how should we work the, um, the as defined by? So you have pesticides, colon, and then you just listed substances, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, as defined by, blah, 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 blah. Is that okay? Semicolon. Yeah. And sure. That's yeah. that's sure. That works. And our classified is not. Sure. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're getting there. <laughs> it's a process. Okay. Uh, oh, regarding pesticide definition. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if an organic pest management is also a focus. I don't think that is that what OPM is? Organic pest management. Yeah, organic. So I assume we now have an integrated pest management plan. I don't know. No. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's <coughs> a focus. Does anyone else feel like that's a focus? I mean, it would be a nice thing. It is, I'm not against it, but I don't right. know that it speaks specifically to these. No. No, I mean we do still have in the intent that part of the intent is to introduce and promote natural, organic, cultural, and management practices to prevent and when necessary control pest problems on all the town and land. Yeah. Um, so again, we could just say. The intent section is very broad and we've defined things elsewhere. Yeah. So does that mean we need to include mm, in their section five, right? Organic organic pest management practices. Oh yeah, we do have shall it be that. the method or of choice. You're right. But we don't go into detail. But we don't at all go into detail. So if we want to, if we want to include that, we need a better definition. To, yeah, give more detail. Is there some authoritative body that gives organic pest management practices, and we can just say practices recommended, such as those recommended by authoritative body? <laughs> you know what I mean? To have something in the definition that says these are the kinds of things that we're talking about. Um, in the same way that we're not listing everything that's toxic to in category one or two, we're just saying everything that is in those categories according yeah, to the EPA. Just, well, you're just pointing back to what control products. Are just pointing back to the know. section that they could reference themselves. It already just, says, yeah, no. Yeah, Northeast Organic Farmers Association, right? Right. And I think that his point was, though, it's it's also a mess, general law. Um, 
um, Section 5A, 132B. And I, think his, uh, I take his point is to just, do you want to throw that in there as well? So people have reference because we've referenced mass general alarms and other places we should reference them here to keep consistency. I'm guessing that's where he's going with that. What is section 5A? It says the department shall promote the use of biologic controls, integrated pest management, sustainable agriculture, and other alternate pest control methods through education, technical assistance, and research in order to reduce or eliminate whenever possible human or environmental exposures to chemical pesticides. Okay. And then it has another sentence um, about distributing an annual report that describes the efforts taken and the progress made in reducing pesticide use. So that's probably the part about uh, education. So used in marble heads regulations. I didn't look up marble heads regulations. So, um, so, shall be the method of choice to understand, prevent, and control potential pest problems um, as are in accordance with Section 5A of Mass General Law, Chapter 132B. Mm -hmm. Does that, that just add that before the semicolon? Um, sorry, sorry you're in the definition section. Sorry, I was reading the marble. The marble head has okay. a very extensive definition oh, okay. <laughs> of organic pest management. Um, and so you were saying to add the reference to the 5A section, yeah. the definition section? Uh, no, or under that section control of potential. Five. Yeah, section 5. Before the first semicolon, just add in accordance with you know, mm -hmm. section 5A. Yeah. yeah, and I know from working with town council before, the reason that the town council would like to see us do it this way as well because they're going to come back and they project just about everything in there. Okay. Uh, it's because they say when that changes, you have to change your document. If you just reference right. the law, yeah. then you don't right. have to change your documents. Yeah. Right. right. And okay. And so if it changes. Yeah. Right. And I agree with that. <laughs> yeah. And I thought Andy was saying both to add, um, to make a change to the definition section. To including this OPM. and to add, yeah, and to add a reference to Section 5A. Well, I don't know that we need to because we're not actually Yes. yes, please. Since the rest of these comments from Andy are all legal questions, I would Just suggest we include that with the bundle to, the to town, town council, council to okay. double check on those. Okay. Just in the interest oh, yeah, of time, I, I, I have to, yeah. I really kind of have to wrap up. And but one other comment, um, section five, I just noticed that um, there's a reference at the very end of that section that um, list of products as may be approved by the director or by the Board of Health from time to time. It should be the health, health agent. agent. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Throughout the yeah. document, it's health yeah. agent. Yeah. I think that was a cut and paste. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you're right. It should be referred to legal. I think. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you'll get us a yes. marked up version. You get that to yeah, I can, uh, do, can I get a 
this version. <laughs> you want the clean copy electronic? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can mark up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Then you can yeah. use that. Yes. We'll Thank you. The same dog. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, where are we? Right. Review minutes. Somebody, okay, so the first one is September 16th. Where am I? I have no changes. I have no changes. I don't think I was at this one. <laughs> <laughs> I, only, I, only I, think that's I think that was the one that's that came to me. Uh, all right. Oh, so right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Motion to accept the minutes of uh, September 16, 2019. Amending them by removing our Oh, oh, Larry. 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 oh, sorry, I didn't even know that you did. I thought you meant you didn't want to comment on it. No, 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 I obviously have no edits. I know how concise you are compared to my three Well, it was a quick, it was a quick one topic meeting, so. Uh, Any change? changes? No? Okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of the September 25th, 2019. Second. Meeting. All in favor? Three, zero. And, uh, Motion to adjourn. <laughs> the next meeting is um, Thanksgiving Eve Eve. Yep. So I'll be coming with my apron on. Okay. <laughs> do we want to move the meeting? Should we? Do we? Do we have a, what do we have to do with the meeting? It's kind of a hectic week, isn't it? Yeah. For me, yes. Not so much. <laughs> so I'll have my apron on as well. <laughs> But it's okay if it's a. Fine, I'll see. Do we have Do we have a big um, agenda as of right now? I know that could change. I mean, is it reviewing pesticides? <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends, right? On when they on. So wait, no, we do this to the. So I'll send you this, and then that gets sent to the town council. Town council. Town council first. Town council first. Oh, okay. Because then that'll be the so combined. I'm so I'm going to send you the clean copy. You're going to make I'm the corrections, and then you're going to send it back to Jean. That way, Jean can send it to Tom. Uh, why don't you just do both of us? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Both yeah. Both so of us. we wouldn't be doing it at that meeting. Right. At that. Okay. I next can't imagine. The um, meeting is the December meeting when I want to do the goals, right. which will yeah. be a bigger. Yeah. Thing. So uh, yeah, I suspect Tom. I mean, if Tom Council doesn't have. Well, don't forget, goals, we're in deep in. Town meeting in the month. Town meeting for right. right. too. That's the it's thing. It's a short month for right. us with two holidays and three nights of town meeting. So should we keep it on the books for now? But then keep it on, well. yeah. yeah, keep it on for now with a tentative, you know, with the acknowledgement that we may cancel if we don't really have anything other than minutes review. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then maybe, yeah, the only other thing would probably be if you wanted to talk about MHB. Yeah. I'm sorry. But, to talk about and so we. <laughs> We're meeting on Tuesday nights to accommodate our associate member. Oh, do, do you think it's, I don't know, does anybody? <laughs> Did she say anything about that? Mm -hmm. She said that, um, she sent me an email that she wasn't going to do the meetings because she couldn't do them on Monday nights. And I said, oh, okay, great. They changed it to Tuesday. And she said, okay, great, I'll be there. Okay. okay. Do we all want Tuesday night meetings? I mean, it's fun. We're here, so. The day doesn't matter, but the, the time, the time helps. Just the the later. Yeah. Um, but I'm also happy to arrive late if you guys want to just get it started. And I mean, this is 6 6.30 or something. Yeah. This is fine with me. So we'll stick with Tuesdays at 7, hoping yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think that probably okay. works for everyone. Okay. Everyone, right? okay. 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 Someone on a second motion? Oh, oh sorry, second. <laughs> 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 We're 
tentatively still doing We're keeping November. it for now. And, but, yeah. But if we don't, if, yeah. If there's nothing on the agenda, yeah. there's no sense in okay. having a quick one. Second. 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 Okay. <laughs> Uh, all right. Okay. 